Hello friends and neighbors. The purpose and function of this video is to give clarity and closure to the email communications that an individual named Colin Jeffrey hyphen Andrew Colin Baird and myself exchanged. As you can see by the comment on your screen, Jeff has given me permission to do that. It says, it would be appreciated if you posted my email and read it to the audience. There was a lot of stuff left out, like disclosure, disclosure to the customer of the mistakes and the $2,000 I spent on workshops going over every word of the boilerplate document. Your show, your choice. For the $2,000 spent, I got $100,000 back worth every penny. So I guess Jeff is claiming that uh, he spent $2,000 on workshops going over a boilerplate document that had mistakes on it, and they, they got back $100,000. So they must have won $100,000 in a case using a boilerplate template with mistakes all over it that they paid $2,000 for. Or, or spent $2,000 on workshops going over that template. That's wonderful. That's awesome. But it doesn't add up to me. Because if this guy is saying that he spent $2,000 basically on a workshops learning about a document, a template that has mistakes all over it, and they got back $100,000, they won $100,000 or, or whatever using that, then why are they on my channel? Why are they here? I'm curious. And why are they asking me to handle their case? Which you will see in the emails. He is asking me to handle a case that he's involved in some, somehow, some way. So if he's had successes with other people spending $2,000, getting $100,000 back, why is he approaching me about anything? Why does he want to learn correct grammar now? which actually he doesn't want to learn correct grammar, uh, at least from his correspondences, that's what I can guess, because he's just about doing everything he can not to do a workshop. He'd rather have me take over his case and do it for him or sell him a boilerplate template with mistakes on it. And here you see, he talks about that. He says, regarding the upfront template, David's upfront boilerplate quorento was full of mistakes to force the recipients to learn the grammar by correcting the mistakes. That, again, is a huge line of bullshit. I don't know any other way to be as blunt as I can about it. That's exactly what it is. Because how... Okay, if, if David Wynn Miller sells a book for $200 full of mistakes to force the buyer to learn the grammar. How are they going to learn a grammar with a book full of mistakes? How are, you going to, how are they going to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar when the quote unquote textbook of correct sentence structure is full of mistakes? That would be like you as an English speaker, you want to learn Russian and someone hands you a Russian handbook full of mistakes. How are you going to learn Russian? You have to have a correct performance to know what a correct performance is. You can't learn correctness by studying incorrectness 100% of the time. Do you see what I'm saying? The logic that Jeff is sharing is critically flawed. All right? Critically flawed. With your videos, I've slowly began to correct the problems in David's butchered document. What if you released a boilerplate document full of mistakes? And that prompted me to create a video talking about correct volition and how it is absolutely appalling, abhorrent, and just downright horrifying to me to think that I would ever do something like that or that someone else, a tutor, would do that with correct volition. Because correct volition, it's your duty to release the best of your best to the public. I would never release anything that I knew had mistakes in it unless I released something alongside it with corrections 
so that for rule one rule equal you have a problem you have a solution otherwise if you're just releasing a problem if you're just releasing a document with mistakes on it with no um, with no venue for closure on how to correct those mistakes then number one either you're ignorant and you don't know what it is you're talking about or number two you don't care <laughs> what happens to people because keep in mind friends and neighbors there are people right now in prison serving time for paper terrorism for using incorrect grammar or number three you want to make a buck you don't care there's mistakes in it and there are people out there that sell this book right now they sell this book knowing there's mistakes in it but they sell it anyways and they act as if there are no mistakes in it on friday august 26th 2022 at 1109 a.m jeff baird fluffy 831 sent me this email apropos of nothing now Anyone who watches my videos, who does their due diligence, watch the videos from beginning to end, know that my email address, the primary function of it, is for people that want to apply for Correct Grammar Workshops. It's a service I offer in the public. Okay? That's it. This guy sends me this apropos of nothing. In, 20, in August 26, 2022, they say, For the claimant is with the knowledge of the parse syntax with the studying of the David Wynn Miller with the time of the two years by the claimant. For the claimant is with the fascination of the power with the words with the lacking of the color by the claimant. For the claimant is with the chase mortgage deed of the MI. The MI. The millions dollar loan with the correct parse syntax of the color code with the page two of the David Wynn Miller study guide. For the conversion of the deed is with the correct syntax by the time taking with the 35 hours. For the claimant is with the curiosity of the success with the cancellation of the loan with the voiding of the contracts by the claimant. For the claimant is with the gratification of the teachings of the colon Jason space colon Matthew with the help of the knowledge cultivation by the claimant. All right. So this is not correct sentence structure. This is what I would term quantum gobbledygook, which was passed down from Colin David Eiffelwin, Colin Miller, to his student and protege, Colin Russell Hyphen J. Colin Gould, who then in turn passed it down to his people. And this is how they write. It is not correct grammar. I call it quantum gobbledygook. Right down to right here, what he's saying up here, his he has colon Baird, colon space, Jeff hyphen Andrew equals claimant. I think they mean claimant. So right here, for the claimant is with the knowledge. That is incorrect. If you watch my channel, you know this. A correct sentence structure, the most basic form of a correct sentence structure, would have two positional audio fact phrases on the port side of the verb and two positional audio fact phrases on the starboard side of the verb. Always two positional audio fact phrases before the verb. Always, 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 always. There's only one here. For the claimant is with the knowledge. So that throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, babble. So I have with the knowledge of the, okay. So we have parse hyphen, or I'm sorry, parse apostrophe space syntax so this that's incorrect because compound facts would be connected with a hyphen you put two sevens together you connect them with a hyphen that's a compound fact there's another mistake with the studying we have a particle of negation ing of the david Wynn space colon miller there's another mistake incorrect use of a hyphen with the time of the hyphen tilde two years that is incorrect as i said a minute ago hyphens are used to connect two sevens two or more sevens to make compound facts a hy uh, hyphen would never start a word or a term because it's not connecting anything then there's no seven in front of the hyphen 
So that's another mistake by the claimant. And you would never uh, precede a by the with an of the. The correct form is for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. You would precede it with with the, with a possessive, never with a concern of the, because it voids the mathematical interface. So how many mistakes in this first sentence? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six mistakes in that sentence. And this fellow claims to have been studying with David Wynn Miller, or of studying David Wynn Miller for two years. And this is the result. For the claimant, okay, another one. No, only one position lodial fact phrase in front of the verb, so that voids the mathematical interface. One mistake for the claimant is with the fascination of the power with the words, with the lacking. Okay, he has two with this together. That's incorrect. That's another mistake. So one, two, three, particle of negation, ing, of the color by the claimant, preceding by the with of the. So that's another mistake. For the claimant is with the chase mortgage of the... Okay, so you get the gist. This is incorrect grammar. He's not using correct sentence structure. Mistakes all over it. And that's two years of study with David Whit Miller. No wonder it took him 35 hours to uh, convert the deed to correct syntax, which I don't know what they mean by that. I don't know if they mean the bank number values because the number values in this syntax right here you see in the screenshot is not correct. Uh, I can see it right now just looking at it. Because um, right here you have a 2-3. If this fellow really studied with David Wynn Miller for two years or studied syntax for two years, he had to have come across the five syntax patterns. And nowhere in the five syntax patterns is there a verb adjective pattern. And let's see what else they got here. Uh, a 403, that would never happen. You would never have two fours next to each other. There is no 4-4 four, four syntax pattern. So as you can see, this is the result of, I guess, their two years of study. Um, and this is what they sent me. Apropos of nothing, on August 26th. So now I'm going to show you my coolie on a back to them. But what, the reason why I went through all that was to give you a basis, a background for what's to come next. So my correspondence back, my kuleana, is my standard kuleana. I sent it back on August 26th, same day. I wrote their name as they wrote it, Jeff hyphen Andrew, but I wrote it correct in the correct order with correct punctuation. And then I thank them for requesting to board the vessel. And at the time I sent this, I had 400 plus videos. I now have 600 plus videos. Woo woo. <laughs> uh, so right here, you look right here. Um, I offer to schedule a video consultation. That's my offer. Because as I stated at the beginning of the video, that's the purpose of this email. If you're applying for a work, if you're emailing me, then the only service available to you, someone I've never spoken to before, someone I have no trust count with, the only service available to you is to apply for a workshop. The service I provide is, is teaching workshops. If you're congruent with the terms and conditions of that uh, scenario, then we would proceed with a contract and all that stuff. But that, that's what I'm guessing they're here for because it's the only service that's offered. So I'm offering to schedule a consultation. Let's see what Jeff says. This is August 26, 2022. They do not write back or respond or acknowledge that email until October 5th. So... 
that's about a, over a month later um, they don't even acknowledge the email or the offer apropos of nothing they say wondering if you could bring closer to the certification of David and Russell so I guess he wants me to bring the certification of David and Russell closer to him but the thing is is I don't certify David and Russell in any way shape or form I mean as far as grammar goes as far as personality goes I can say that uh, I can certify that Colin David I win Colin Miller with uh, the interactions that I had with him in the last year of his life through phone calls skypes text messages and test text messages and emails he's a very kind individual a very patient individual and a very charismatic individual I can certify those qualities as far as my you know interaction with him but grammatically I don't certify anything I mean other than the mistakes that I've pointed out and Russell I'm not even going to go there so that's not going to happen I'm not going to bring anything closer to Jeff I want your opinion of the questionable offices of plenipotentiary judge and commander-in-chief was created through an affidavit with a tacit response agreement now I know what Jeff's saying there all right but that sounds really fictiony to me affidavits are fiction it's part of the fiction system in the five plus years I've been doing this almost six years I've never written an affidavit never been necessary to do that I create document contract postal vessel court venues all different types all right never an affidavit because it's a vowel in front of a constant at the beginning of a word. It's no contract. And I have done a video on that. Also, could there be some expansion of the closer on practical uses of the syntax? <clears throat> like syntax void mortgages sent to the SEC for the whistleblower award up to 2.5 million title 15 section 78 FF. Ah, now we're getting a little closer to... Uh, Jeff's volition here well my guess of what Jeff's volition is through his plain English fiction babble and I also think he uses the word closer repeatedly I don't think he means closer as in bring something closer as a, in a distance I think he means closure and that's the other thing about this grammar folks you gotta be meticulous you gotta go over your words whether it's in fiction or it's in fact you got to spell check you got to read back what you one technique I like to use and it helps tremendously is whether I'm writing plain simple English or correct sentence structure read it out loud if you read it out loud you'll catch a lot more errors than if you're just looking through it with your eyes and, and reading it silently that's a little tip for free this could help home, homeowners pay off their mortgages with the whistleblower award. Okay, so this guy wants a bag, it looks like. That's what they're looking to use. Now, here's a question for you, friends and neighbors. Logically, think about this. The SEC is one of the most powerful fiction organizations. It's one of the most powerful organizations within the fiction system. Okay? It's part of the whole octopus or, or whatever you want to call it one of the most powerful tentacles of that what do you think is going to happen if you send a syntax mortgage to the SEC do you think they're going to go gosh Margaret it's a syntax mortgage we need to hurry up and give that person 2.5 billion dollars they caught us Oof, you got us no that's not what's going to happen. Especially if you're sending incorrect syntax, like Jeff showed the example of uh, in his email a little bit ago that I showed on your screen there. They're just going to think it's a paper with numbers and they're going to throw it in the trash bin. All right? That's about how useful it is. Or maybe they might use it to start a campfire. I don't know. Or wipe their butts. Uh, 
The one thing David never did was show proof of the lawsuits filed in courts only from his kangaroo court. Um, okay. That's an interesting psychological hint about Jeff Baird's uh, condition of state here. He calls David Wynn Miller's court a kangaroo court. Um, so I can see that Jeff gives a lot of authority to the fiction system. And that, in and of itself, is a huge psychological hurdle for most, most people to come to overcome or to get past. Because the fiction system, when you use correct sentence structure, the fiction system, the fiction court system has no authority. There is no authority there. You would never submit yourself to their authority, ever, ever, ever. Jeff has yet to grasp that concept, it appears. My theory is David bypassed the court completely and went directly to the Securities and Exchange and split the award with the clients. I'd like to know if Jeff has proof of any of what he's saying. That he has proof that David got any money or any of his clients got money. Because I have spoken to hundreds of people, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people over the last five plus years, a small percentage of which knew David personally. And no one ever said or ever claimed or bragged that they got money from using David's grammar. Meaning, David's documents that he sold to them. Um, never known anyone to be successful with those. So that's October 5th. Um, be notice. Jeff does not take jurisdiction over his words. He does not put his name or punctuated name at the bottom. So really, you know, I get numerous emails on a daily basis uh, to, to be very efficient and so that it doesn't take up the bulk of my now space, the bulk of my day. If I don't see a name at the bottom of the, of the email, then I don't know who you are. So keep that in mind as we move forward. So I correspond back. As stated in my initial response, I am a grammar tutor. It's not up to me to prove other people's claims. It's up to them. I teach grammar. If you're interested in learning quantum grammar, I've offered you a 10 to 15 minute video consult. I will offer a second time. Would you like me to schedule you a consult? Thank you. So that's my second offer. He did not acknowledge the first one. So with the balance of honor and grace, I am now offering a second one. Let's see what happens. On October 5th, he corresponds back, how many consultations can I get for a $2,500,000,000 whistleblower award? I believe this is how David became filthy rich. You have the knowledge to do the same thing. Okay, so, as I said, I, I corresponded with David, you know, multiple times in the last year of his life. Never got the impression that the man was filthy rich. Think of those terms that this guy is using. Filthy rich. And he's bringing up money again. This guy is after a bag. He wants money. And he sees correct sentence structure perhaps as a way to do this. To get rich. For whatever reason, I don't know. Um, but it's all about the money. It's a very fictiony, <laughs> fictiony condition of state of mind when you're thinking about that all the time like that. So how many consultations can I get for a 2.5 billion dollar whistleblower award? So this guy thinks that the fiction is going to award him that if he uses correct sentence structure, which is, well, if he would actually buckle down and take the time to learn the grammar, he would know how ludicrous of an assumption that is okay so in any case I've offered him for a second time a consultation would you like me to schedule a consult and this is how they answer so then I say is that a yes or a no because he's not being straightforward with me I don't know if he's trying to entice me 
into being drawn into the fiction web that he spun for himself? Um, I don't know. But what I do know is he did not answer my offer. So he sends back on October 5th, he sends back, uh, yes, if you can provide guidance and proper syntax information that I am not already familiar with leading to an award. Leading to an award. See, this guy's all about the money. You done videos only commenting on Russell, David, and the other syntax YouTube channels. You done videos. That is absolutely, positively incorrect. So this guy... Um, what was the has basically jumped the shark here? He hasn't done his research. He hasn't done his due diligence. If he did, he would know that the 600 plus videos on my YouTube channel, 90% uh, of them, are teaching the rudiments of correct sentence structure from different angles. Now the other remaining 10% are reaction videos to Russell, David, and others. A small percentage which I guess it appears is the only percentage that this guy has watched. He hasn't bothered to go into the syntax playlist that has like about 70 videos or the correct sentence structure playlist, which has the same and parse playlist, which has probably twice as many, or he hasn't even gone into the parts of speech playlist or the mini class playlist where I go into how, how do you create a document contract, postal vessel court venue, a live life claim, uh, how to create a correct sentence structure, how to parse, how to syntax. He obviously hasn't looked at the majority of the channel, in other words. So they have not done their due diligence. If there was a video about wiping the mortgage out with syntax, would bring more views than you have ever seen. See, they're still trying to entice me. The spin-offs for conferences would keep you busy day and night. David charged five grand per voided mortgages, 5000 Asteric 400 mortgages equals two. Wow, this guy is like super stuck on money. Wow. I have already submitted my corrected mortgages to the mortgage to the SEC. So this is in October of 2022. So if they have submitted submitted to the SEC, which means they bow down to the SEC, then they should have got some sort of response back. So again, why are they here? Why are they here? If, as I showed at the beginning of the video, they spent two grand and got back $100,000, what, what do they need me for? Oh, they responded with an investigation case number and said it would take five months to investigate. Five months, so October of 2022. October, November, December, January, February. So it's long past five months, so there should have been some sort of resolution or conclusion to that. Fortunately, I had enough knowledge of syntax. The entire 18-page deed of trust with a few syntax mistakes. A few syntax mistakes? Let's talk about multiple, 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 multiple syntax <laughs> mistakes. So, again... The only word I really see when I'm looking at this is the word yes. So about 15 minutes later, they send me another uh, email saying, I see a brilliant person giving free information to the world with little compensation. Again, talking about money. He's got his mind on his money and his money on his mind, I guess. The answer has been with you the whole time. So this guy, I guess, knows what's best for me. Thinks he knows what I know. Obviously, he doesn't, judging by his grammatical performances and the countless mistakes in them. So, I don't know. It, 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 on the level, I would say that uh, I feel like this guy is trying to ingratiate himself uh, into my good graces. So, because I saw that, yes, I sent a schedule possibility to him. Um, on the same day, October 5th. But guess what? No response back. Look, October 5th, 2022. And the next email from him is Sunday, December 4th, 2022. 
So October 5th to November 5th, November 5th to December 5th, or December 4th, that's two months. Two months went by. He did not acknowledge the scheduling. He did not acknowledge the consultation that I offered him. And then, two months later, he says, for the goal of the appointment is with the knowledge and use of the quantum parsi syntax, sentence structure grammar with the civil court case of the property land violations by the claimant. Apropos of nothing. Doesn't even acknowledge the scheduling appointment that I sent him. And now, he wants another appointment. And I don't even know what this is, quantum parse, syntax, sentence, structure, grammar. I mean, what is that? Is that what he calls what he does with the grammar that two years of David Wynn Miller's study has provided him? Um, so if I'm looking at this sentence structure here, the claimant, which I guess would be him, has violated the land, friends and neighbors. Because if you read that back, or try to read that backwards, it's for the claimant of the land violations. But then again, he proceeds the by the with an of the, which voids the mathematical interface. It is no contract. This is not correct sentence structure. This is quantum gobbledygook. So at this point, I'm beginning to run out of chances for this guy. So this is the way, if you notice, as I said before, he does not take authority over his words. You don't see his name anywhere down here. So I send them back the standard email that I would send to anyone who does not include their name or take authority over their words. Hello, whomever you are. You know my full correct name. I ask that you give me the same consideration. And then I offer them a third time, offer them a consultation. Then they send me back a blank email. Oh, wow. December 4th, right? The next correspondence is January 10th, over a month later, and there's nothing in the body of the email. <clears throat> so I send back another one another one and then I do offer again a fourth time I offer a consultation on January 11th and in January 11th they send me this proof of the symbols used in four corners rule do you already have a video on this not acknowledging anything that I said in my email or any previous interactions that we've had as if nothing happened he just sends me this Friends and neighbors, are you getting, uh, are you gaining insight into Jeff Baird's mental condition of state here? Because I certainly am. Finally, I'm just getting, you know, fed up with this. I say, why are you ignoring the terms and conditions of my vessel construct? You're a guest, and yet you refuse to comply with the terms and conditions by sharing your correct name. We have no contract, and you are in violation. This is your last chance to comply with rule one, rule equal. So I'm basically laying it out on the line, you know. I haven't even mentioned that I've given him four opportunities. I've offered four times to uh, schedule a consultation. Not only that, I actually sent him a schedule slot to agree to, yay or nay, to have a video consultation, and they completely ignored it. Didn't even acknowledge it. So that's January 11th. And then on January 11th, he corresponds back with his correct name. He says, I'm apologizing for not honoring your terms and conditions, so this time I provided my name. So this time I provided my name. I, I asking permission to board your vessel if there's any more room left. <laughs> I would like your donation information to help support you. You have been a blessing to the world. Also interested in proof of the symbols are applicable in the four corner rule. What statutes or styles, manual or dictionary that a judge would recognize? Just like you said, you can't tell the judge that David said so. Thank you for your time and hard work. I'm sensing a little bit of perhaps genuineness here. I can't be sure though. Uh, but again, you know, the, the psychology of what they're saying, what statutes, styles, manual or dictionary that a judge would recognize? So he's giving authority over to a fiction judge. 
again, you can use fiction styles manuals in, in, in dictionaries to help provide a continuance of the evidence for your correct sentence structure claims, but you never give them authority over your construct like this guy does, and that is a very subtle psychological difference. So January 11th, that's his correspondence back, and then on January 11th, I send him out a fifth, or I mean a second schedule possibility uh, from the fourth offer. Okay, that's January 11th. And then on January 12th, as you can see here, um, he says, Tuesday, January 17th, 2023, 11 appointment. Thank you. See you there. That's on January 12th, so that's a confirmation as far as I can tell. So I say we are all set. I will email the confidential link to you shortly before the scheduled time. Thank you. And that was on January 16th. January 17th, I send out the link to the meeting location an hour before. Of course, he doesn't show up. <laughs> So I send out my avoidance email, and that is on January 17th. A few weeks later, he writes back, um, Thank you for the closer and correction of the Four Corners rule. Sorry for the confusion with the Zoom meeting on January 17th at 9.30. Uh, okay, he says January 17th at 9.30. Let's go back. This is him writing to me, January 17th, 11 o'clock appointment. Those are his words, friends and neighbors, 11 o'clock appointment. And then over here he says, Zoom meeting on January 17th at 9.30. So I don't know where his mind is because he seems to be a bit confused about his location in the now space. And if it's one thing that you must know is your location. At any given moment in the now space, you, and, and also in relation to your other, you know, contract parties that you may be dealing with. And this guy doesn't seem to have the grasp of that. So he says, I feel confident navigating Zoom and want to set up another meeting. Another meeting. So he wants me to offer him a fifth consultation. I see value in what you're teaching. The last video about close, closer. On the authority of David Russell, he answered a lot of suspicions of David's claims. Very interested with the application of quantum in a courtroom banking venue. Thank you for the hard work giving me away this opportunity. So, <clears throat> it's really trying my patience, this guy. Luckily, the vast majority of people that I interact with are not like this. Like, it's a boom, boom, boom. You know, they, uh, the consultation gets scheduled. They show up on time. We either, you know, move forward with the workshops or we don't. And it's, it's a very efficient manner. But once in a while, once in a blue moon, someone like this shows up. So then on February 3rd, um, I send a fifth offer a third location for a consult. This is the third time I've sent a location to him. Okay. February 3rd. And on February 3rd, they correspond back. <laughs> I ask, is this a confirmation? Because you're just repeating it to me. Uh, and then on February 1st, they say confirmed. Thank you. And I say again, we are all set. I'll email the confidential link to you shortly before the scheduled time. Thank you. And then on February 4th, they say, so basically with the Zoom, I click on the invite and wait for you to connect. Or is there more things on my end that I need to do? I currently have the Zoom app on the phone. Zoom connection. Friends and neighbors, I'm a grammar tutor. It's not up to me. I'm not, I'm not a Zoom tutor. Okay. And at this point, 
this guy has used up all of his honor and grace cards with me. Um, used them all up at this point. With uh, the multiple times I've offered consult, uh, consultations, the multiple times I've actually scheduled them or offered to schedule them. Um, it's not up to me to spoon feed anybody about how to work a freaking computer or an app. The day and age that we live in, as this guy says, you, you can look it up on YouTube and figure it out. If you can't figure it out, then you probably don't have any business using correct sentence structure. I can tell you that. If you can't figure out how to navigate through these locations on your own. So that was Saturday, February 4th. And then on February 14th, I send out the location to him. So I'm going to go look at my notes to see how the consultation went. Because obviously, he wanted a contract. So these are my notes from that day, February 14, 2023, uh, 10 o'clock consult. He has a lot of questions about court and the flag. Beginner. Says he wants to do workshops. Contract send. So yeah, so I sent the contract to him. Um, I vaguely remember that. But I don't have any specific recollections other than these notes here. But the important thing is this. I labeled him a beginner. And this guy says he's had two years of study, David Wynn Miller. Um, but judging by what he shared with me in those early emails, definitely a beginner. So I sent the contract. And then he says, donation process very complicated to navigate on February 17th. And then I respond back, how so? If making a donation transfer to a bank account is too complicated for you, would you prefer to send the minimum donation gift value via postal money order? Postal money order. I do offer that venue. It's a physical location. And then they say, yes, please, on February 17th. Then on February 17th, I correspond back. Here's a confidential P.O. box for postal money orders. You can choose to send gift donations. No personal checks, cash, etc. Only postal money orders, U.S. dollars. Then he says, sending a donation of 140 for a workshop. Please let me know when the workshop can be scheduled. And then I say, when your postal money order gift arrives at my postal station port location and I transship it into my bank port safe harbor, I will confirm with you and then proceed with scheduling the workshop. Thank you. And then they say, thank you. Can't wait to get started. God bless you. February 22nd. Then on March 10th, they say, for the claimant of the claim is with the quest of the workshop by the claimant. And then I say, yes, I'm aware of that. As stated previously, when I receive your gift, I will let you know. Thank you. So obviously I have not received it yet. And then I said, hello, I, on March 12th, I picked up the Western Union money order you sent for 140 I must point out that I specifically noted that I only accept postal money orders. You saw that, ladies and gentlemen. This is another example of Jeff Baird not, either not reading an email, not understanding an email, or just totally ignoring what I'm saying. Postal money order. He sends Western Union. I say a money order authorized by a post office. I stated that clearly in the email. And then I show where I quote it. And that's on March 12th. And then on March 31st, they write back, in regards to the money order, go ahead and keep the money. I've earned. learned so much from your videos. I don't need your tutoring. <laughs> well, I mean, that's his choice. Okay. Making payment for a tutor session is very challenging. I'm sure you'll figure out how to cash the money order. Enjoy the money. You've already earned it. So he's pretty much... Uh, wiped it clean of that however i will say this i did attempt to cash the western union check 
but I was not able to do it for whatever reason. Uh, my bank would not cash it. I still, you know, I have a continuance of the evidence for that that I'm not going to show here because that's confidential information. But I didn't cash it. Never got the 140 donation. But because he corresponded back the way he did, this was my response to that. I said, I really appreciate the manner in which you've responded to my last email. This is how I vet people, believe it or not. I am having difficulty cashing the check. The bank won't accept it for some reason. I have a couple more options to try before I call it a day. Regardless, in my book, you have one workshop credit available to you when you want it. Thanks again. And I stand by that, friends and neighbors. Even though I didn't cash the check, I didn't get the 140 donation. He still has a workshop on credit with me. One single one-hour workshop if he wants it. So that was March 31st. Then on May 21st, so March, April, that's about three months later, apropos of nothing, he says, how much would it cost to fly out to California and do this case for me? I have a written, the fictional case. Again, he doesn't put his name in there or anything. Doesn't take jurisdiction over his words. He is well aware of the terms and conditions of my email vessel by now. By the, uh, you know, what, almost, yeah, 44 emails back and forth with us. He knows the terms and conditions. He has to credential himself. So I send back this again. A sixth offer of a consultation. And I don't know who he is because he did not credential himself. My patience is gone with this fellow at this point. And that's it. That's the last email that was sent. He never wrote back to it. And that was on May 21st. So the reason I did this video is just to just document this stuff because... He did give me permission to do it, and there it is. So I have blocked him from my YouTube channel because he keeps, in the next comments video, I'll show you, he keeps talking about stuff that has nothing to do with correct sentence structure. Again, completely ignoring uh, the terms and conditions of the YouTube channel. To keep it on topic with correct sentence structure, he starts mentioning other websites and things like that that have nothing to do with correct sentence structure. Okay, he starts talking about you are law and some other guy or something like that and incorrect boilerplates. Again, if this guy spent $2,000 and got $100,000 back using an incorrect template, then why is he here? writing to me. Why, why does he want me to take over his case? Which I would never do. After these 44 email interactions with a fellow like that, that's just too much of a, un, in, from my perception, an unstable psychological condition of state with a fellow like that. Seems like a nice guy, um, but just not all there, you know, for me anyways, to be able to contract with someone like that with any type of stability. Um, says he doesn't need workshops, yet he shows no evidence that he has any closure on the grammar at all. And he keeps talking about in these comments and stuff about stuff that has nothing to do with correct sentence structure. So, I mean, I, I wish him well on his journey. This email or this video is just to document the whole communication so that no one can ever say, meaning Jeff can say, that I didn't provide everything out there in the open so that people got the whole story, if they're even interested in it. You know, I don't expect this video to get many views or anything at all uh, because it's just me documenting a situation to safeguard myself and my vessel for the future. So this is a lesson, knowledge cultivation lesson in, you know, if you're going to communicate with someone and contract with someone, read what the other contract party is is writing uh, it's like you're having a conversation with someone it's like it's it's like this is the type of person perhaps jeff baird who 
when you're speaking to him, he's not listening to what you're saying. He's waiting for his chance to talk. He doesn't care what you're saying. He just cares about what he's saying, and, he's, and he cares about a, getting money. Because he did not pay attention to anything I said in any of those 44 emails, really, until I told him that I was going to jettison him from the vessel if he didn't share his correct name. Then, when he was, you know, saw that I was going to break bulk, then, and only then, did he come forward, share his correct name, and apologize and all that stuff. But then after that, he continued with the same behavior. So, it is what it is. This is my document of this scenario. And uh, it's just a, a cautionary tale, I guess. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.